Kit Comic Club, written and illustrated by David Pilkey. Chapter One: Ideas. Hey guys, welcome to the first meeting of the Cat Kid Comic Club. Hooray! This is Lil Pepe. He's the president, and I'm the vice president. How can Molly get to be vice president? Yeah. Cause I called it through. I got dipped. Rat. No, there. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Melvin. Can I be vice president too? Um. Hey, I want to be vice president. Me too. We can all be vice president. Sato. I'm gonna be the senior vice president. Oh yeah. Well, I'm the supreme vice president. I'm the triple double secret vice president. I'm the national vice president times ten. I'm the universal CEO of global vice management times infinity. You can't do that. You're fired, Daddy. What's going on? Don't fart me. From what? Um, I've got. Well, we're off to a great start. Yep. I fired him from the comic club. Oh, yeah. You can't do that, Starla. Told ya. But he was trying to hog all the glory. She was, too. If you can behave yourself, then Lil Peepy is going to have to go home. Is that what you want? No, no. Then you'd better straighten up and fly right. Okay. Sorry, Daddy. So if everybody is done being a pain. Then let's get started. That's why today we're gonna work on ideas. Everybody grab a pencil and draw a line on your paper like this. Now on the left side, write five things you love. I'll write comic, flying flies, popcorn, friends, and jokes. Hey Molly. What did you wrote? Uh, all right. Pizza, bubble gum, squid videos, cat videos. Yeah. Okay. Now on the other side, write five things you like to do. All right. Uh. Uh. Play. Read. Laugh. Write and draw. Molly, what did you write? Draw a thing, read, talk loud, and be weird. Great. Without anybody like to share their list. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, Melvin. Behold. Science, math, physics, dinosaurs, and extra credit. Complain, argue, study, bust my teeth, gloat. Smuggling. Uh, actually, that's pretty good. Sad. Low people. Now let's all try to think up an idea by using stuff of Melvin's list. You can write a dinosaur who likes to brush his teeth, or a nerd who likes to annoy people. I got it. Gonna write a comic about a toothbrush named Dennis, who wants to be a lawyer. For dinosaurs, and I shall call my masterpiece. Ta! Then it's the toothbrush who wants it to be a dinosaur lawyer by Melvin the Frog. Okay, now everybody be quiet. I'm working. So let's quiet. I said. Okay, while well, Melvin works on his comic, we thought we'd show you all some done already. Feast your eyeballs. Then it's the toothbrush who wants it to be a dinosaur lawyer by Melvin the Frog. One time there was a cute toothbrush named Dennis who wanted to be a lawyer for dinosaurs. So yeah, the end. About the author, Melvin the Frog. Melvin the Frog is widely known as one of the world's most important major voices in graphic literature. He has won two. Oh wait, no. Countless awards for his genius and awesome humility, like Nobel Peace. Nobel 
Peace Prize for graphic novels and Calderbury Award. His awesomeness has inspired countless ge uh, no, generations of stuff. Coming soon, that is the toothbrush he wanted to be a dinosaur lawyer to. Cretaceous Corp. Copyright by Melvin the Frog. No copying what I'm telling. Well, that was dumb. Hey, we do not talk to each other like that, Naomi. But I was just being honest. So you need to go to sit on a time of rock? No. Then you apologize to Melvin. I'm sorry your colleague was dumb. Phew. And so, worst day ever, spat Molly. Don't worry, Molly. Things will be better tomorrow. How could they get any worse? Chapter 2. We quit. Guys, welcome to day 2 of the Cat Kit Comic. Excuse me, Molly. Before you begin, Naomi has something she'd like to say. Naomi? Um, well, I... I'm sorry I said your comic was dumb, Melvin. I mean, it wasn't very good, and... Naomi! Bella, please, you made a comic. I didn't even do that, but I'm sorry for being mean. Okay. You may continue, Molly. Alright, guys. Does anybody want... To share the comic they're working on? Anybody? Did anybody work on their comic last night? No, I couldn't think of any good ideas. Me neither. I'm not good at art. Yeah, I can't draw good. So nobody made a comic last night. I tried, but it was dumb. I ripped mine up. I can't really spell good. Uh, no offense, but me and some quit. Yeah, no offense. What? Why? Comics just aren't our thing. Sorry, dude. See you later. Wait! What is your thing? Someone likes photography and Stella is a poet. Oh. Well, comics don't have to be stories. They could be poems. And you can illustrate comics with photos. We can? Sure. You can work together on... We can work together? Uh, yeah. Why did you just say so? We're back in. Let's go. I'll write some new haiku. And I'll get my camera. And the rest of you. I'm so disappointed. Fear, fear, fear. You're all a bunch of crazy frogs. You're scared of making mistakes. You're terrified of messing up. Most right. You're afraid to fail. So you didn't even try. If you guys want to be in this club... Then you've got to get over your fears. So assignment for tomorrow is to fail. What? They want us to fail? Yeah, big time. Um, how? Then I want you all to make a comic that is terrible. Yeah, make a super dumb one. Embarrass yourself. Oh, I can do that. Me too. I'm gonna embarrass them myself. Worst comic, get the prize. Can we work together? Of course! Awesome! We're gonna fail together! Let's go make a Lucy comic! Disaster! Here we come! United, we shall lose! Are you kidding? You, what, you know what you're doing? No! Chapter 3 For a Fabulous Plot Hey guys, this day 3 of the CK Station. Did anybody feel miserably last night? I did! I too! I'm a Embarrassment to myself and others. Sweet. Who wants to go first? We do, we do. Monster cheese sandwich. Story by Naomi. Lettering by Kendrick. Color by Pink. Art by Corky. Mother had a little baby. Little baby was very hungry. Give me some food, man. Okay. I will make you a monster cheese sandwich for you. So she went to the fridge, but Mama grabbed the wrong cheese by accident. She wanted to grab the monster cheese, but he, she accidentally grabbed the monster cheese. Mama cut the cheese. She put on, no, she put it on some bread and grill. Badam. Ow! Hey, little baby, 
baby's sandwich, sandwich came to life. Not again. Run, little baby, run. Monster cheese sandwich attack. But then, where does it go? Hey, give me a banana, man. Okay. Oh, there you are. Here, let's be friends. No! <coughs> he tossed the banana. Slip. And then, are you okay? Not really. Here, have a banana. No, I mean, banana. Too late to be friends. It's never too late for friendship. Except when I'm hungry. No. The end. A author's notes. Now we the great. The story is based on the truth. One time, Daddy said he was going to make us monster cheese sandwiches, but not his damn monster cheese sandwiches. I got scared and cried. It was really, really scary. Now we all call monster cheese monster cheese because we think it's funny, but it wasn't that for Normie, the great. About the illustrator, Corky. Corky has been an artist ever since he was a tadpole. His secret is to draw every day and don't give up even if you make lots of mistakes. About the colors, Pink. Pink loves music. He can play the ukulele. Pretty good. He also loves to sing and wrestle. About the leveler, Panda. Panda the Frog is an awesome dude. When, oh man, I mean, he likes swimming and colorful singer. When he is big, he will sail as light as he wants. That was awesome! But I thought you were supposed to make bad comics. Well, it's that it could be done, done. Yeah, but it's still awesome. Really? I think you found a better way to do it. Oh man. Did you like your daddy? Yes, but the ending was a bit fallen. Don't you think? Yeah, it was totally fallen. Mm. Okay, who's next? Me, me, me. My dog by Pepper. Dog is big, my dog is awesome. I can have a dog. My dog poop, big poop. I don't clean it up. But then some bad ninja guys attack. We will defeat and kill the world. But then, they step on the poop of my dog. Oh no! We now have to go home. No fair because of poops on our shoes. It's the reason. My dog saved the world. The end. I love to author and illustrator. Back to Pedro Snipe. P.S. This story wasn't true. It was fake. Pedro really doesn't have a dog. But he wants one. But Daddy says no every time. But maybe I will someday when I'm responsible. The end. How do you draw a dog in first year don't closely easy steps? Then, how to draw my dog's poops? In three ridiculously easy steps. Now give my dog poops. Some personality. I smile, happy, sad, sleepy. Robot poop, bad guy poop, baby poop, lady poop, ninja poop, hard poop, muddy poop, cyclops poop, buddy poop, witty the poop, spider poop, bat poop, poobacca, boba poop, storm pooper. That's awesome, Pedro. Yeah, good job. Yes, that was very good, Pedro. But the potty humor wasn't necessary, was it? That was my favorite part. I do not want you guys writing poop jokes. Why? Well, because there is nothing funny about poop poo. <laughs> did anyone make a comic that is isn't violent or disgusting? We did. Our comic is 100% free of offensiveness. Super Fail by Casey, Kip, and Crowley. One day, a baby was born in the hospital. Happy birthday, kid. What will you name him? Super Fail. Uh, why? Kendall. Kendall. 
Boom. Kaboom. Does that answer a question? Yeah, pretty much. Hey, I didn't get hurt. Gunk. And so, Super Bill, you must be a hero. Help! Help! Quick, Mr. Chance. What's the problem, Mister? That old lady just stole a tomb pack. But the sign says they're free. Read the fine print. Limit one per customer. She took two. I shall stop this fight. Hey, old lady, stop stealing. Hey, no way. You never catch me. Oh, yeah. I'll tie this rope to her car. And I'll tie the other end to the restaurant. Don't worry, mister. Now she'll never get away. But then, uh-oh, I'm stuck. I can solve this problem. Yahoo! He cut the rope. And the car crashed to sell his new toy bomb factory. <coughs> and so, Gee, thanks for destroying the earth. But look, I saved the toothpick. Hooray for Super Bell. The end. Coming soon, Super Bell 2, Old Lady's Revenge. Meet the pretty shirt. Katie likes to hang out with her brother. Kip likes computers and quantibility. Crown likes pizza and frosting. <laughs> I'm glad you said your comic wasn't offensive. It wasn't. So work got destroyed. Billions of people died. Oh yeah. All because of a toothpick. Very disturbed by this comic. They're just so awful. I thought they're supposed to be awful. How about you, Poppy? I bet you made something nice. Yeah, I did, Daddy. It's one of the cute little fluffy clouds. Of that. By Poppy. What's that was a cute little cloud? She was Poppy and that. Hi. Hi. The sun was mean to her. Hey, you creep him in the aisle. Go away. So the cute little fluffy cloud of that cried and cried. The tears watered the dead flowers. Yay. A scale pup. Was not first tea no more. Yum yum yum. Ghost girl and skeleton boy have fun playing in the puddles. Wee! I like this game. Thank you for a nice ray. Let's be friends, okay? Okay. It's fun to be dad. But dad, hey, you guys are dad. Nobody is like you guys. Just ignore her, and she will go away. And you know what happened? Hey, losers! Hey, you stupid! Hey! She went away. And the moon and the stars came out. The end. About the author. Poppy is a frog who lives with her family in a camper by the pond. She likes ghosts and skeletons and drawing and monsters and rain. She likes, I mean, likes to draw every day because it is fun. Also, she likes dogs. The end. Did you like it, Daddy? Um, Poppy. May I speak to you in private? Okay. Is everything okay? Yeah. Are you depressed or anxious? Um, not really. Is anyone bullying you? No. But then, why did you make that comic? Oh, because I like skeletons and ghosts and... But why was the other class dead? I don't know. Lots of people are dead. Hey, I'm back. Just in time, we're giving out awards. Did I win? Yeah. You got the prize, the weirdest comic. Yay! And you guys get the award for craziest comic to Monster Sheep Sandwich. Awesome! And the award for most violentest comic goes to Super Bill. And you, Pedro, you win for the grossest comic. Sweet! Let's get started on the sequel. Let's make a comic about poop balls. And we have got an idea about evil zombies. I'm gonna make a story about that airplane. I'll use felt, glue, and construction paper. And I'm gonna make Dennis the toothbrush. Then, Dinosaur Lawyer too. You should probably put some dinosaurs in it this time. Also, maybe a plot. Something should happen this time, let's just say. I've got it. 
burgers. All right, that's enough. Check the food. New room. All right, kid. Things are getting out of control. Susha, we kids are taking things so far. So from now on, I don't want anybody making comments about poo or that. And no more violence and mass destruction. Can we write about diarrhea? No, zombies, no, murder, no. Hmm. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yeah, me too. Oh man, now we can finish our new comic. May I see it? We just make this cover. Frank and Fart vs. Bionic Bob Bunnies from Diarrhea Land by Rain and Corky. No! You can't finish it! <laughs> From now on, everyone's comic must be wholesome and uplifting with good values and morals. Comics must have integrity and upright virtue. Whisper, whisper. Hey! Should I? Should I? And pretty honor and ethics. Only then can we. What? Hey! Where did everybody go? Chapter 5 The House Call. Come, Nurse Lady, hurry! Puppy said it was an emergency. Oh, it's probably nothing. He worries about those baby frogs too much. Bing, bong! No offense, Helen's you're here. What's the problem this time, Flippy? It's my kids! I think they're disturbed. Where are they? They're all downstairs in the bowling alley. Oh. But look at these comics they made. They're filled with violence <gasps> and body humor. And, and, and one of them is about death. <gasps> oh no, we must operate at once. Hold your horses, dog. Let's read these dark comics first. Good idea, nurse lady. And so, ho ho! They saved the toothache. Well, have you made a diagnosis yet? Um, uh, hmm. I think you're overreacting again, Flippy. Overreacting? But what about the violence? What about the potty jokes? What about the re reckless disregard from the sanctity of life and stuff? Dude, that's normal. Adults make all up stories about that stuff all the time and we call them artists and geniuses and visionaries. Look at Shakespeare. It's all bad and violence and fart jokes. If it's normal and healthy and grown up, then why not for kids? Are you seriously gonna, going to praise a grown up and share a child from the same damn thing? Pretty chill pill, dude. Maybe you're right. I'm always right. Let's go, doctor. Bye, Flippy. I'll try to be more chill. You better. Where did you get all that wisdom, nurse lady? I have a dead three. And they rock psychology. Shh. Gotta be more chill. Be more chill. Be more. Be more and more chill. Chapter 6. King of Chill. Remember you guys started a comic up today. I want to apologize. I'm sorry if I discouraged you yesterday. I didn't have that in my face to spoil everything. You guys should write stories that make you happy. I think it makes you laugh. Then try not to worry about what others think. You'll never be able to please everyone anyway. There will always be haters. So just focus on what you love, do that, and you never fail. Oh, oh, oh! Yes, Melvin. We should always do our best, though, right? Of course. And we should try to improve, right? Absolutely. Well, since you brought it up, I made an all new improved comic last night. Wanna read it? Certainly. That is a good friend who wanted to be a dinosaur lawyer to catch his courtroom by Melvin. One time, there was a good friend named Dennis who went to law school, told he was a dinosaur lawyer. That was easy. I want to help dinosaurs with my math lawyer skills. So he got in a time machine and went back 67 million years. Hooray, now I'm in dinosaur time. Soon Dennis had his very first case. <clears throat> Help my son, Dennis. He is on trial for murder, okay. But he didn't do it. Hmm, let's go. Soon they're at the courthouse. Hi, mom. 
That iguanodon ate my baby. How did you play? No, I didn't. Hmm. What are you guilty? So I sentenced you to dinosaur jail. Oh, man. Wait, I, I have a chance. Iguanodon didn't eat no babies. How come? Because iguanodons are vegetarian. Well, why didn't you say so? I forgot. Okay, you're free to go. Case dismissed. But what about my baby? Where did you see her last night? In Iguanodon's garden. Hmm, let's look there. Okay, so they did. Hey, here she is. Oh, she was asleep this whole time. Let's have a party. Let's go fever. They all had fun and ate good food. Nom 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 nom. That's all. They used Dennis to brush their teeth. Best lawyer ever. The end. Fun fact about the cats. Spinosaurus. Length over 50 feet. Weight over 6 tons. Carnivore. Cassius prayer. Lived on land and water. Their fins may have been used to heat up their body quickly or to attract a mate. Triceratops. Were vegetarians. That had 800 teeth. Their worst enemy was the T Rex. Cretaceous period. Weighs up to 13 tons. Weighs up to 30 feet. Iguanodons had five fingers and could grasp things with their, their hands. Their thumbs had big spikes on them. Sweet! Size up to 43 feet long. Weight over 8 tons. Fame. Cretaceous period. Toothbrushes were invented in 1977 by Dr. William Brush. He named them after his daughter, Toothatta. They were mainly used for oral hygiene and are not for o- known to practice law. Size up to 10 inches. Weight 6 ounces. Done. Plank. Disco era to present. About the genius worker, Melvin of Rock is a multiple major award. Winning author and illustrator of over one graphic novels. Known throughout the globe for his intelligence and dashing good looks, Melvin is also regarded as a key influencer and a transcending fashion guru. Coolest author award of all time. No take it out. How can one frog be so awesome? Scientists are working around the clock to solve this mystery. The world may never know, said the world's second smartest person, Dr. Genius. Fans and Mars of Melvin can purchase his autograph for one dollar while supplies last. Buy ten, get eleven for half price. Pulitzer Prize for Literature. To that brush memorial award. Very good, Melvin. Yeah, that was way better than last time. I told him to put dinosaurs in it. I was going to anyway. And I'm not trying to tattle or anything, but someone taught me how to draw out of a book. Yeah, but I wasn't tracing. I was just... I was... It's okay you copy. This is how I taught myself to draw. Me too. I started copying cartoon characters that I like, and I drew them over and over. And soon, I was making up my own characters. In my own style. But it all started with copying. To show to <coughs> see it's okay to copy. <coughs> Melvin. Oh, and one more thing. You shouldn't make up facts, buddy. I didn't. Toothbrushes were not invented in 1977. Oh, yeah. Well, I tried to look it up. But Summer and Star were hugging the computer all last night. We were working. Yeah, we were editing a haiku photo comic. Check it out. Birds, flowers, trees, haiku, and photos by Summer and Star. Shh. Little flower buds, even if no one can see, open anyway. Vicious girl will see a twig in her feet when she sees home. From a great distance, branches pierce the sapphire sky like dark lightning bolts. But branches up close will tell another story full of potential. If you look closely, you can find marvelous things that yearn to be seen. 
If you look closer, you may find something hidden deep in the shadows. Which of these are we? Shall we hide or brightly shine? We cannot do both. We are very small, but the things inside our hearts will fill up the sky. How about haiku? By similar in style. Haiku are poems with 17 syllables. They come from Japan. The syllables are divided into three lines. Five, seven, and five. They tell a story of nature and beauty and truth, simple and profound. Yes, so haiku may take that good the master can't write the best one. About the poet and the photographer, Summer and Star, uh, star artist and BFX, but their sisters were. Star loved to read and she would disappear in a book to get lost in mood. Summer dreams about dinosaurs and strange theory. She also loved crepes. That was wonderful, girl. Thanks, Daddy. We're gonna make a new photo comic this weekend. Sweet, you guys rule. Thanks, we know. Does anybody else have a comic to share? Nope, not yet. Nope. But tomorrow is our last club meeting this week, so everybody bring bring in new comics tomorrow. <clears throat> but we're not done yet. I'll see you. It doesn't matter. Just bring us a sweet for two, and we'll have a comic club show and tell party. Hooray! Chapter 7 A Novel Idea <coughs> Soon. Hey, what are you two still doing here? Everyone else has gone to work on their comics. We know, but we can't. We still can't think any up ideas. Yeah, we're still waiting to be smart. You know, girls, I've always said. Those who rat it around wait for inspiration doesn't deserve inspiration. Uh, what does that mean? It means quit being lazy. Force yourself to create. But if we are not good at making up stories, <laughs> then write some papers. Boo, write about yourself. Make an autobiographical comic. Ray, you can write about your feelings, and Wendy, you can write about your adventure. Hey, Daddy, can we make a true comic about you? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Come on, Daddy, it'll be fun. Well, guess you! We're gonna make an autobiographical comic about Daddy. Why do you can't make an autobiographical comic about me? Why? Because he doesn't drive a car, silly. Oh, yeah. No, that's not right. Okay, Daddy, it's of everything about your life. Yeah, it's not at the beginning. Well, okay, started a long time ago. Chapter 8, the show and tell party. <clears throat> Next day. Well, we've come to the end of our first week. So let's party! Yay! Hooray! Yeah! <clears throat> I make monster sheets sandwiches for everybody. And I can throw faces on them if you want. And there's mustard and ketchup. Wait, me next! Oh, oh, oh! Daddy and I make cookies. Hey, they look like the cute little fluffy cloud of death. Her eyes are chocolate chip. Sweet! Awesome! Wait. And then make dark poo brownies. They're just regular brownies. But I wrote them into a little broth. And squeeze them together. Mmm, they're disting, disgustingly delicious. The shell, shell, the more shell. And we bake a super veil cake. Whoa! Hold up. Bing. Cake pops. Get yeah, a cake pop right here. Mmm, brownie. Okay, everybody, it means it's time to start our show and tell party. Well, Daisy and I will go first with our sweet pillow, Squid Kit and Kennedy. What Kennedy? Let's go with Tucky. Oh, I need that. So let's go for order at a ta-da! An epic sneak fulfilled by Molly and the little people in a world where everyone looks the same. One kid looks different than the rest. And so, get lost, squid kid. Yes, grand. Hoo hoo hoo. Meanwhile, in the world where everyone thinks the same way, Candidate did it. You weed, oh, Candidate. Yeah, I beat it. Hoo hoo. And watch our work because when these two misfit me, things will never be the same. BFFs forever. <laughs> squid kid and Candidate, world's greatest misfits, coming soon. Well, what did you guys think? Um, I liked it. 
but it was too short. Yeah, it's supposed to be short. It's just a few. We're not done with the whole book yet. Oh, oh, oh. We made it from few, so it's about Daddy and the life he lived before he met us. Daddy had a life before us? No way. Yes, yeah, true. And we're telling a story. Check out the sneak peek. Maybe it will be a sneak peek by Wendy and Ray. The world filled with creatures big and small. The baby fish was the little of them more. The baby Flubby alone and sniffly. Hey, fish face. Fishy, fishy, fish face. Hi, fish face. Lost in an ocean of peril and abandoned in an abyss of indifference. One brave baby fish must stick deep to survive against impossible odds. Wendy and Rain proudly present the true story of courage. <clears throat> Baby Flubby, before he was daddy, he was sitter. Coming soon to a cat kick comic club near you. Well, what did you think of the world? What? What's going wrong, kid? It's too scary, daddy. We don't want baby Flubby to get killed. No, no, I didn't get killed when I was a baby. I'm here now, aren't I? Oh, yeah. That means that everything worked out okay in the end. Gee, thanks for the spoilers, Daddy. Yeah, now we know the ending. Does anybody else have a sneak peek? We do, Daddy. We took pictures of our action figures, and we actually make a talk comic with them. Wait a minute. I don't remember buying you these action figures. You didn't. We modified all of our broken figures using putty, glue, pipe cleaners, and tape to create all new heroes and villains. Chuck Muck spider back. An epic review by the Hackerbone. They worked with sinister scoundrels to subjugate the souls of civilization. Ha ha ha! I do actually accidentally sat on a slider. Owie! Hey, you bit my butt! Sorry, but you sat on me, so we're even for. Oh no, a toxic spider venom is transforming my butt! No, I said I was sorry, jeez. Meets a hero with the heart of a warrior and the butt of the spider. Chop my spider butt. An epic brutal comic by Hakobo, the Roy Alva Commando Kid, the Elite Regiment, James Goldberg as Chuck Smart Spiderbutt, Wei Chan as Jake the Flying Spider, Frogman Hammer as Dr. Pasty McSprinkle, and introducing Scott the Worm as Scott the Worm. Coming soon, which comic has been rated PGOG, probably gonna offend grouches. If you're a grouch, then read it. Problem solved. By the baby from administrating of this con. Very small point. Probably not important. That was very good, boys, but I don't understand. How did all of your action figures get broken? Oh, because we threw on all the seat. They broke all by themselves, by accident. <sighs> Alright, would anyone else like to share the preview? We will, Daddy. We're making a comic with clay and cardboard and stuff. I wrote the story and we make the art. Baby Frog's World. Story by Billy. Art by Freda, L, and Zap. Once upon a time, there were three baby frogs who went to the police academy. They study hard. I will protect and serve. I will protect and serve. Learn Kung Fu. And directed lots of traffic. Crash. The suit. They got tired. Of working for the man. Hey, let's bring justice to the universe, okay? So they built up spaceships and blasted off. Soon, a bully was detected on planet 39. Hey, let's go! And so, wrong! Hey, quit bullying that little dude! Make me! Uh, I don't make cupcakes. I eat them for breakfast. Who win the epic space battle? Final and baby frogs were coming soon. That was wonderful. Thanks, Daddy. Yeah, you all did an awesome job this week. I can't believe that everybody made it comic. I should write two comics. <clears throat> two award-winning comics. Awards don't count if you give them to yourself, Melvin. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They do, too. They do not. Do, too. Do not. Do, too. Melvin, Naomi. I thought you were trying to be more chill, Daddy. Do you need to sit on the time at rock? I'm sorry I yelled at you kids. Don't worry, Daddy. It's just like we learned this week. 
It's okay to fail miserably. Just remember to avoid kiss on what you love. And I've always tried to improve. Hey, we want some of that hug. Yes, hug it out, man. Well, you can't ask for a sweeter ending right than that. So I'll stop here while you don't miss our next epic adventure. Kick, kick, climb a cup. Book two, coming soon. Notes and fun facts. <clears throat> Chuck the Lost Spider Box was made from a broken action figure. Epoxy three animal paint and 48 black pipe cleaner generally them. This is together to make it slick. <clears throat> the robot bully in Baby Frog's work was made out of cardboard, hot glue, tape, paper clips, and plastic sound stressing lids for the idol. The Baby Frogs in Baby Frog's work were made with Japanese rice clay, ice bodies, hands, and feet, and toothpicks painted in acrylics and markers, rooms, and eyelashes. The pencils on page one. 164 are toothpicks covered with markers, which are the uh, which are the uh, the base rock squad in the police academy. Yep. Several scholars called sick freshman of high school on page 125 is not definitive. The art of haiku is ever evolving and has a rich, complex history. English language haiku had first appeared in the late 19th century. They were based on a Japanese poem called Ranga, which were structured improvised verse poetry collaboration, <coughs> often with one delight. The first stanza of a Ranga, called the Hoku, become what we commonly think of a haiku. One of the oldest and most famous Japanese haiku, technically a hoku, has a frog in it. Breaking the silence of an ancient poem, the frog jumped into the water a deep resonance. Basho, 1644-1694, translated by Nobuyuki Yuasa.